A is for English and Field School. When I was five years, I got a piano and I started at once to write my own song. B is for Benny Anderson. My grandfather and my father and myself played the accordion together. B is for Bjorn Ulvius. I started with music when I was 11, 12. I don't know if I A is for Annie Free Ling Stark. And I decided very early what I wanted to be, and that was supposed to be a, a singer. <laughs> so I, uh, I participated in a different song contest and won several of them. This is Alice. Over 100 million in album sales worldwide. A decade of hit after hit. The formation of ABBA really began in 1963. Puren Ulvios remembers his meeting with Polar Music President Stig Anderson. And Stig came to our little town. He had heard about our group. He had a, a record contract in his hand. So we made a record, which, which was a hit. <laughs> what the name was? Yavan. What was the name of it? <laughs> well, I guess you could roughly translate it. I'm waiting. By my place where I make uh, oh, wood coal. <laughs> I don't know what that's called. <laughs> so the night, this was a song about uh, I'm waiting, my waiting for that charcoal. Oh, you wait to get ready. About the same time that Bjorn was meeting Stig, Benny Anderson was becoming a member of his first successful rock and roll group, the Hep Stars. It was Finn Hedlund who asked him to join. He called me because he remembered me from this event and uh, said that he was in a band called the Hep Stars and wondered if I would be interested in playing with them, which I obviously was. So I said yes, and I started with them. And within three or four months from that point, we became the most successful pop group in this country. We felt the lack of original material. And I just, one night, I said to myself, I should, I should try to write a song. I mean, if I never try, I, might, I will never know if I can do it or not. So I did that, and we recorded it. It was a song called No Response. Bad lyrics. I didn't know any English at all at that time. So it was, you know, I wrote the melody, and I had a dictionary and tried to get the rhymes together. It's very weird, strange to listen to today. We recorded it, and we had a minor hit with it here. And then I wrote a song called Sunny Girl, which was a big hit here in Sweden for us. In 1966, Bjorn Ulvius and Benny Anderson met. Bjorn describes it. Both of the bands were touring heavily all over Sweden. Of course, we ran into each other now and then. I remember even one night, Vestavik, from my hometown, about 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock at night, and we said, let's write a song now. We didn't have any place to go. So we called my father and asked him if we could use his office at the paper mill. <laughs> Oh, which we did. We had the roadie squad there with uh, instruments, and, and there we sat the whole night writing a song. There's some kind of magic to that, you know, that, that format of a song. Three, four, five, six minutes. Only a little short period where you, you give your emotions. I don't know exactly what it is, but it has certainly meant a lot to us. There was a third writing partner in those days of Bjorn and Vinny, manager Stig Anderson. If not always the music, at least I wrote lyrics uh, and, and Scandinavian lyrics for foreign songs here. I, it was a time, like in the late 60s, when I had like eight songs out of top ten, uh, not, uh, not only as a publisher, but also as a lyric writer. And uh, there, there aren't too many in the world who can say the same. And you don't write it all today? No. I wrote a song for my secretary. <laughs> that was the last one, huh? Yeah. Not the last one, but the last one so far. Well, did that happen abruptly? Because like the time. Happened. Yeah, that's the only reason. Huh? It was a real teamwork at that time. And uh, they were criticizing me for, for my lyrics, and I was criticizing them for their music. If I didn't like a part of a song, um, I told them this part of the song is, is no good. So they corrected it. And then when I came with my lyrics, they said, uh, you know, forget it. It's a good by Charlie, you see, which meant I had to, uh, to change the whole concept. But that was good. It worked. You really saw them as great talent immediately. Yeah, I did. I first saw Bjorn because I met him first. And then Benny was a, a member of another very famous local group at that time in the mid 60s. And when they decided to um, start writing together, I thought that was a great idea. And then they came to me and said, are you interested in us as a recording group for your label? 
Um, and would you help us off, uh, out with the lyrics? And I said, sure. And I just told them one day, uh, I told them, I think that one day you will come up with a song which could be a, a world hit. Uh, but I didn't think of ABBA because it wasn't Benny and Bjorn being artists. I, 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 I talked to them and I um, thought of them being writers and having other artists to record their songs. It was just that ABBA grow, it was growing like a natural thing. All of, a day, all of a sudden we were there. It's kind of natural growth. This It was never decided that we should uh, have a group called ABBA because it started with Bien, Benny and Bjorn for a start. Huh? And then came the girls whom they met and uh, they decided that they could use them for their recordings called Bjorn and Benny uh, from the very beginning. And as Bjorn and Benny, we had uh, some big hits internationally and uh, could be could be anything. While Bjorn and Benny were making hit records, the youngest member of ABBA, Heinietta Feldskug, was only in her early teens, but she was already singing professionally. Then I started to sing with a dance band when I was 15 years. At the same time, I worked in a firm as a telephonist, and suddenly it was too much. And I uh, went on with the orchestra for two more years. And then we sent a tape up to Stockholm to a producer called Lil Little Gerard. He was a rock king. And he listened to the tape and he liked my voice. What about your songwriting today? Um, Lauren, mm. didn't do most of the songwriting. I won't tell you. <laughs> no, huh? I don't write so much nowadays. Why is that? Well, uh, I think it's... Uh, I don't have the right feeling for it anymore. I don't have the right interests. Well, she may not be writing songs these days. There's no question about the fact that the lady can sing. And likewise, Anna Fried Lingstad, or Frida as she's known, also started at a very young age. She said she never wanted to be anything but a singer. And I lived together with my grandmother because uh, by that time I thought that both my parents was dead. But later on it showed that my father still was alive and he's, uh, he's living in Germany. As I remember, I've always been very fond of music. And I started as a little kid to sing, you know, in, in school choirs. And um, a band leader by that time heard me singing and he liked it very much and asked if I was interested to be a vocalist in his dance band. And by that time I was only uh, 13 years old. And you lied about your age? Cause it, yeah, I had to do because you had to be 15. There was never any question from the time you can remember that you were actually going to be a professional singer? No. You thought you'd make a living at it? No, no. I mean, by th that time I really didn't know if I could make a living out of it, but uh, that's, that's what, it was the only thing that I really wanted to do. John and I met in a TV program. Then Frida and I met in the first TV pro program we did as solo artists. So it started very naturally for us, you can say. And by that time, also, Frida had, had met Benny and I met Bjorn. So I met them when I was on tour with another band in Malmö, in the south of Sweden. And um, it was kind of party, late party. And suddenly they showed up and we started to talk. And we got to like each other very much. We had a lot in common, a lot to speak about. Benny and I started to go out together, and that's how it started, actually. And by that time, Benny and Bjorn had already started to write songs together, and um, they made an, an al album, just the two of them, and they needed harmonies on one song, and uh, asked Agneta and myself if we wanted to do that, and so we did. And uh, we thought it, it sounded very good, the four of us singing together. In 1969, the two couples of ABBA became engaged to be married. Heinietta was Bjorn and Benny was Frida. In 1970, the foursome performed together for the very first time at a local nightclub. They call themselves engaged couples. <laughs> Do you mean that tour that we did in Sweden? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. It's a great memory for you. It was, it's a great memory, yes, because it was so bad. <laughs> but it was fun to do it in a way. Well, you were basically not being yourself, huh? No, exactly, because we didn't do anything of our own material. I mean, we let others write songs for us by that time. So it wasn't actually Amba. Were you funny? Were you funny? We tried, but I don't think we were. <laughs> <laughs> ABBA continued to move toward being ABBA. 
As Agneta explains, the four began singing together regularly. Background focus for Benny and Bjorn. And uh, they had a hit in Japan, I remember. You were and, singing background on that? Yes. I think it was called She's My Kind of Girl or something. And uh, then we were called uh, Svenska Flicka only. So we had no names. No names, Frida and I. Uh -huh. You were called what? Svenska flicka. What does that mean? <laughs> Swedish girls. In 1971, Heinjeta and Bjorn were married. 1973, a real beginning for ABBA. Their first competition in the Eurovision Song Contest. Bjorn explains. We entered in the Swedish part of the Eurovision Song Contest. Kind of strange, but it's, it, it has a very, very big audience. I, I don't know now, but uh, at that time, it had probably between 500 and 600 million viewers. And then there were about 25 to 30 entries from different countries. That was uh, Ring Ring? Sorry. That was Ring Ring, but we, we never, we were only in the Swedish part of that competition then. There's always a, a national part where they decide which song to send to the big international thing. So we, we ended up as number three in Sweden. We had a big hit, kind of big hit album, and we were on our way. Since we came number three the year in, in 73, in 74, we entered this competition again. And uh, we said to ourselves, this time we really are prepared for it. We're really going to win. So we thought about it. And we sat down to write the song for it. But what was the one we chose? Because we, that was the one we, we thought we would like to perform. So we did it and we won. From Waterloo, it was success after success for the new group called ABBA. Stig Anderson. And all of a sudden you are there and you find out that nobody can do as good as they can these four people together. And then that was the time when I started to think of them being a group, a recording group. Then I came to this ABBA idea and um, we were there. But it's um, very hard to explain afterwards. So you, you named them? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I took the initial, so that became ABBA. Abba is uh, really, which I got to know later on, Jewish and means father. So when uh, we have been down in Israel, for instance, they, they have an extra kind of pun there because they say, here comes uh, Abba of Abba, which means father of Abba. I travel all, all over the world today and um, also if I'm not or if I'm back here in my so-called home country I um, I have meetings meetings with uh, business partners we are in, not ourselves not our own company polar uh, we are not on the stock market here but we have the majority shares in in uh, real property uh, companies that are on the stock market. We have uh, one of the biggest uh, manufacturers of bikes in Europe. Being a Swedish company, we have that on the stock market and uh, have the majority in that company. Uh, we are building up a, uh, a leasing and financing company, which we will take out on the stock market here uh, this spring. And uh, we have so many ideas and uh, it's so fascinating and thrilling, I would say, to, to work also with this. I have, because somebody has to take care of uh, the money that comes in and uh, try to do something with this money. So I give ABBA a good future also after uh, the ABBA period, because there is a life after ABBA and we all know that. But it has been really thrilling to, to be kind of leader of, of the, this, and uh, I love it. For some time, ABBA consisted of two married couples. Sadly enough, those marriages both broke up. Interestingly enough, ABBA didn't. Here's what Bjorn had to say about it. Well, we, uh, we got married, but then after a while, the marriage didn't work. But we still work very well together as, uh, as, art, as, as musicians and artists. So we decided to split up the marriage, but not split up, uh, split up Abba. That's pretty rare that people can do that. I don't know if that's rare. Maybe it is, but uh, we had uh, maybe extraordinary possibilities to solve a lot of practical problems around it. But most people can't solve that easily. And we were good friends. We both decided that we can't live together. That doesn't mean we, we, we can't be friends. There's a question of how hip Abba really is. In other words, uh, you're not, you don't have the same image as the Rolling Stones. And what do you think your image is? And are you hip? Do you consider yourself a hip group? Whatever that word means. Whatever it means, right? We certainly never try to be hip. 
I feel we, we're part of the、uh, contemporary scene very much. I mean, as far as sound is concerned, we also have had our influences from lots of different things, more so than probably someone who grew up in the United States, because we've been exposed to the American music scene, the English, but at the same time, to some degree, to the Swedish music, folk music scene, to the、uh, Italian, German, French, all of that together. Meaning that、um, there are a lot of styles. A lot Of different traditions that we now and then like to try, meaning that、um, it's very difficult to say exactly what ABBA is, what ABBA music is. In their last appearance in London, ABBA sold out Albert Hall one hour after tickets went on sale. In fact, they sold enough tickets by mail to do a concert every night for the next two years there. Their only tour in the United States and the last tour in Australia were all sold out. Yet they are rarely on the road. We asked Benny Anderson to tell us why. The tour in the United States.、Uh, did you enjoy it?、Uh, yes. Like、uh, I enjoy、uh, touring anywhere else, which is not very much, because I think it's too much.、Uh, it takes too much away from from the create creativity that is essential. To get records together, to to write songs, and one tour for two months is taking a year out of the important production. That's how I feel. Of course, it's 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 fun to be to be on stage facing the audience and all that. It's、uh, that's only two hours a day, and the other twenty two hours is just、uh, you know struggling, getting from place to place. It's the same for all touring bands, and I shouldn't complain because we haven't toured very much, you know. The future for ABBA looks very bright indeed, with all kinds of new projects coming about. Like at the moment, Frida is in the studio with Phil Collins producing a brand new album. We wanted to ask her about it. It's going very well, and、uh, I really, I'm very excited about this because he's a very good producer, and it's a great deal of happiness to work together with him, and and also to work together with other musicians and、uh, another engineer. You know. <laughs> New people around me, and that's really a challenge in a way.、And、the last album you did was how many years ago? A single album. Yeah, it, it was、uh, an album that I made seven, I think, it was six, seven years ago. But、uh, that one was in Swedish. All the songs was in, in Swedish. And so that's the story of ABBA: five people from Sweden who make up the world's largest-selling musical group: Frida and Yeta, Bjorn, Vinny, and Stig. You all are real close. I, I, I see that. It's a joy to be just observe that.、And、you are a family. Sure, we are a family. That's good to be. You must be very proud of this whole thing. I am proud of the the whole thing. I'm proud of the four members of ABBA, and、um, I think we did a good job. ABBA has been recently shocked to read newspaper headlines reporting that they've been banned from Russia, a country where they are by far the most popular group. The story of ABBA has come to you from the Polar Studios in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm Bob Hamilton, publisher of the Hamilton Radio Report in New York, and have been privileged to write and, with the dedicated assistance of Lars Anderson, produce the story of these magnificent people. My thanks to Stig and Yetta, Frida, Pjorn, and Benny, and the people at Polar in Stockholm, Atlantic Records in New York, and my own staff at the Radio Report. And thank you, Sweden, for ABBA.